Welcome to Allies or Enemies, where we talk about games and specifically how they work for two players. This time we are looking at the Quacks of Quedlingburg, a light game about adding stuff to a bag and pulling it out blindly. The story is that every nine years, the town of Quedlingburg holds a festival for maverick apothecaries, snake oil salesmen, and charlatans. These quacks all compete to make the best potions out of a buffet of unstable and questionable ingredients. What this looks like in real life is players adding chips decorated with spiders and moths, mandrakes and cherry bombs to a bag, and then pulling them out and adding them to a pot, trying to fit most of the good stuff in before they get too many of the bad ones and their whole concoction explodes. It's a fast, fun, push your luck game with a quirky theme and a fun magical style. The rulebook is clear with plenty of examples. It'll take you maybe 10 minutes to pick up everything and you can explain it to a new player in five. Core concept, simple. Take ingredients out of your bag, add them to the pot. Where the complexity comes in is with the individual ingredient powers. Each one will do something different when you add it to the pot, but all of these are helpfully explained on the ingredient cards in the middle of the table, and none are particularly complex. There are generally helpful bonuses like moving extra spaces, gaining rubies, or pulling extra ingredients. The one exception to this are the cherry bombs, and why are cherry bombs in here anyway? These little guys will blow up your pot if their numbers add up to more than seven, and that's where the fun comes in. You want to keep adding as many things as possible as the further you go the more points you get and the more money you're going to have to spend on new ingredients for the next round but if your pot blows up your round is done and you're going to have to choose between points or money for new things, which will set you behind your rivals either way. After each round, players get points and bonuses and add new things to their pot based on how far they got before they quit or exploded. Then they throw everything back in that bag and try to brew an even better concoction. The game ends after nine rounds, which usually takes around 40 minutes. One of the great things about Quacks is how accessible it is, and part of that is because of its low cost. Luckily, that doesn't mean skimping on the stuff that matters. The pieces are all made of a thick, sturdy cardboard that stands up to a lot of grabbing and shaking, and everything has a nice thematic design, including the pot-shaped player boards, the ingredient books, even the insert. The player bags work great, the rubies feel nice, and most importantly, everything is well designed with easy to understand icons and clear art that differentiates the pieces as you pull them out of the bag. If you need a bit of extra explanation, the ingredient power is all right there on the ingredient card, and the startup pieces and rules for explosions and what to do after a round are all on the player boards. There is really no need to ever reach for the rule book. There is no individual thing in the box that will knock your socks off, but as a collective, it does a great job of bringing the theme to life. With such a simple core concept, you might think it's going to be easy to figure out the best ingredients and the best path forward. Luckily, Quax is a couple of steps ahead of you with a bunch of variable parts. The biggest one is the ingredient books. There are four sets of these, meaning that each ingredient has four completely different powers that you can choose from game to game. There's some ramping up of complexity here, but mostly it's just different. There are also fortune cards that come out at the beginning of each round, slightly changing the rules or benefits, as well as a reverse side to the player boards that adds another level of complexity and gives you new ways to spend rubies and get ingredients. The game works great at any player count from two to four. Because you're all adding to your pot simultaneously, there won't be a lot of difference in game time at different counts because the decisions are mostly in what ingredients you buy between the rounds, which is a really fun and strategic decision. There isn't a lot of opportunity for analysis paralysis. The main interaction is in peeking over to see how far the other apothecaries at the table have gone and deciding whether it's worth to pull just one more and risk blowing up. You'd think this increases with more players, but the stress is just as high with two as it really becomes a kind of who will blink first gunfight to see who has the guts to reach back in that bag and risk it. It does a good job of keeping things fun with a clever catch-up mechanic that gives a player who falls too far behind a bit of a head start in the following round. 
This is one of our favorite quick two-player games, and we never feel like there is any part of the experience that is missing. There is a fun silliness that warmed us to this game right away, and it's different from anything else in our collection. It's quick and simple, but there's skill in building your ingredient bag, and there's some legitimate stress to grabbing that chip when you already have six worth of cherry bombs, but you need just a couple more things in the pot to win the round. It does have a bit of a Harry Potter potion-making vibe that's going to open the door for many, but it's very much its own quirky thing. There's something endlessly fun about just putting your hand in a bag and pulling out a surprise chip, whether it's a helpful mandrake, a pumpkin, or a dreaded cherry bomb. And because of the quick play and setup time, this is one of those games you can fit in before or after something else. If you're in the market for a game that's fun, fast, and different, you could do a lot worse. And that is it. Let us know what you think in the comments or if you have other bag building games to recommend and hopefully we will see you all next time for another game.